The identification of vulva and related seaweeds is often very challenging because multiple species with overlapping morphologies frequently co-occur. For this reason, DNA barcoding is in most cases indispensable for reliable identification. A particularly suitable market gene for the identification of vulva and related taxa is TOF-A, which is usually amplified with the primer pair TOF-GF4, TOF-AR. However, DNA barcoding only allows for the sequencing of one single algal specimen per, per sample which means that analysis of the compositional dynamics of communities such as those in the background picture here are extremely work intense. A way out could be metabarcoding of eDNA. Metabarcoding allows to sample whole populations of algae or to sample just water that contains DNA traces of algae, for example, because they release zoospores. The water can then be used as it comes, or it can be filtered to enrich algal particles. And samples generated in such ways can be DNA extracted, the TOF-A gene can be amplified and sequenced, and the resulting sequences can then be compared with a suitable DNA database, which would allow us to obtain a species list for the sample. Such an approach might also allow to estimate abundances of taxa, because most abundant organisms should leave more DNA traces behind. We have recently developed a methodology for metabarcoding of ulva. In the first step, we developed new degenerated primers that amplify a shorter section of the TOF-A marker gene than the traditional primers. And in the second step, we then optimize the amplification protocol. Our target amplicon with the length of 550 base pairs, including the primer sequences, was best obtained when we used the two-step amplification protocol. Samples were first amplified over 30 cycles with the traditional primers, and the amplification product was then amplified for 20 more cycles with the new primer pair. We then constructed an aligned reference TOF-A database that currently includes 882 sequences. One third of these sequences represents Olvofusiae, one third other eukaryotes and one third prokaryotes. To test our methodology, we collected three test sample sets. Sample set A included samples from nine sites in northern Germany, and at each site we collected water samples, filter samples, and tissue samples as described before. Water samples were conserved with ethanol and sodium acetate. Filter samples were enriched on membrane filters with a pore size of 0.2 micrometers, and tissue samples were lyophilized and grinded. All samples were amplified and sequenced in duplicate which then resulted in a set of 54 samples. Sample set B included filtered water samples from 17 sites in the Kiel Fjord. Each site was sampled once in August and once in November, which resulted in 34 samples. And sample set C was composed of tissue samples from mock communities that were generated in a lab experiment, and I will explain this later. Our TOF-A libraries were sequenced on Illumina MySec, which resulted in most cases in between 30,000 and 100,000 reads per sample. For quality filtration and annotation, we used the Mother software package. For annotation, we used an algorithm by Wang and co-workers that is implemented in Mother, and that is based on a sequential comparison of nucleotide atmias along the sample DNA sequence with corresponding ACMIS along the aligned database. To obtain a measure of annotation reliability, we then annotated all sequences with 10,000 bootstraps. Bootstrap values were in the same way generated for the reference database itself, and sample annotations were accepted when the bootstrap values did not exceed the bootstrap values of identified 
most similar sequences in the reference database. The detection of Olvo fusiae in our field samples was relatively specific. Actually, only 3.3% of all sequences that could be classified did not belong to this class, and more than 90% of all reads represented the two genera Olva and Bledingia only. Altogether, we detected 48 species, and 25 of them were Olvo fusiae. Also, the 11 most abundant species that we detected all belong to the genera Ulva and Bledingia, and in one case Ulvella, as shown on the right hand. And the first eight species with particularly abundant reeds are exactly those Ulva fusiae that are generally considered as the most abundant in northern Germany. Only two species were detected that have not been recorded in the region yet and one of them, Ulva mediterranea, was detected extremely rarely and may be a wrong positive record. However, the second, Ulva sp10gws, was detected repeatedly at certain sites. Ulva 10gws is an undescribed species that was so far only detected in Atlantic Canada and Tasmania, and it may now have reached Germany. The abundance of tough A reads that were obtained with our methodology increased significantly with the increasing distance from shore. The trend is particularly obvious when we look exclusively at reads representing Olvo fusiae in the right hand graph. They decrease from approximately 30,000 per sample in a distance of 1 meter from shore to only approximately 300 in a distance of 10 kilometers from shore, that's a factor of 100. So altogether, read abundances and field samples seem to meet our expectations. However, this was less the case when we conducted a lab experiment with more communities of known densities. We mixed all Valinsa, all Compressa and Bledingia Conuta in different proportions. In the case of Ulva Compressa, the proportion of detected reeds corresponded approximately to the proportion of biomass in the mixture. The line in this plot represents a perfect correlation, and you can see the symbols are not too distant from it. However, in the case of Ulva Linsa, the proportion of reeds was way higher than expected, and in the case of Bledingia Cornuta, it was way too low. We also observed that the sampling method affects the relative abundance of reeds representing different species. This gets apparent with this MDS plot, which illustrates that Bray Curtis similarities tended to differ between tissue, filter, and water samples that are represented here by green, orange, and blue symbols. Permanova confirmed that this difference was statistically significant. We can also look at the loading vectors of the different species, and we see that Bledingia species tended to be particularly abundant in water samples here in blue, while Ulva intestinalis and Ulva prolifera tended to be particularly abundant in tissue samples here in green. And most of the other species, and not all of them, are shown on this plot, tended to be most abundant in filter samples as shown by the direction of the vectors. So our method seems to detect ulva and related species with relatively high specificity. And it detects species that are known to be present in a sample and read abundances in field samples seem to correlate approximately with expected abundances. However, the results from our first lab experiment suggest that different species are not detected with exactly the same probability. So more studies with mock communities are needed and are currently underway to investigate this further. Also, the different sampling approaches clearly resulted in different read abundances, although they did not differ significantly with respect to the species that were detected. <coughs> 
please contact me if you are interested to contribute samples to a hopefully global comparison of Olvalis to 8 diversity later this year.